The brain, a pulpy mass of cells and fibers. The brain, is, of course, is an enormously complex structure. Made of proteins, fat. The human brain is three and a half pounds of tissue that makes us the very essence of who we are. It's made up of a hundred billion brain cells, which has over 100 trillion connections. That's more computing power than any known supercomputer that we could ever imagine. Our ability to create, to understand how the universe around us works, to discover new science from molecular mechanisms of the workings of cells to how to build incredible cities and to really explore the world beyond us. Oh, it's beautiful, Mike. It really is. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flying... That is all done by this three and a half pounds. Disorders or diseases that affect the human brain has an effect on us and our family and our loved ones unlike any other type of disease that we experience. I've had the unfortunate experience of caring for children with very complicated brain tumors to adults with brain tumors and watching these tumors basically take away the very essence of who our patients are. Cedar sinai is really a very special institution. We treat more disorders of the human brain than almost any other medical center. Brain cancer to stroke to spine disorders, we are one of the largest caregivers in the West. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we see you. We've never had a time where all of these things have really come together, where complex things that we're trying to treat without much room for toxicity. For the first time, we actually have a shot. When I first moved to Cedars about two decades ago, we came up with the concept of whether or not we could teach the immune system how to identify the cancer, how to attack it and potentially eradicate it without the need to do radiation therapy and chemotherapy. And we were really the first in the world to develop therapeutic vaccines for brain cancer. This cancer that has a median survival from time of diagnosis to death of about a year and a half, with our latest generation of the vaccine, we now have patients that are living past 10 years that have received the vaccine from this cancer. We've now moved this vaccine into 120 different medical centers around the world in a phase three trial. And it's the type of things that we're doing that I think can really be truly transformative in terms of our ability to impact brain disorders. In the last 114 years, life expectancy has increased 40 years. But what we know is that our bodies are designed to really outlast our brains. By the time one reaches 65 or older, one in eight of the individuals in that population will have Alzheimer's or some type of dementia. What we now know is that Alzheimer's disease has actually started 20 years before the patient has developed symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. We ask ourselves, how can we do better? And it turns out that the back of the eye is an extension of the brain, the human retina, it's brain tissue that we can see when we look through the eye. The hallmark of Alzheimer's disease that occurs in the very earliest phase, these misfolded proteins that form in plaques that are called amyloid plaques, we've developed a way of looking through the eye non-invasively with about a 10 minute test, be able to detect very precisely these amyloid plaques in the back of the retina. This is allowing us to essentially see the very earliest stage of this disease, and we can actually follow how the disease is increasing and progressing 20 years before the patient may develop symptoms. When you go in to operate on a brain tumor, that brain tumor can look exactly like normal brain tissue at surgery. We have a very difficult time visually trying to see what's tumor and what's normal. And in the brain, it's high real estate areas. So you have areas that control language, control memory, control vision, control motor movement, so we cannot really do these wide resections. And one of the things that we are pioneering at Cedar sinai is taking the venom of scorpions, which is called chlorotoxin, and it has a very unique property in that it only binds to the cancer cell. We tagged it with the fluorescent 
die. So that when we inject it in patients, it goes right to the cancer cell and make those cells fluoresce during surgery. And we're using techniques like this to be able to more precisely do surgeries that are less risky for our patients and allows us greater ability to remove even those infiltrative, isolated tumor cells that are so difficult to find. There are a lot of unsuccessful stories that we still have because we don't have cures for a lot of the disorders that we treat. And that's why we need to continue to do everything we can to accelerate the pace of discovery. But it's really the wins that we get that keeps us going. I've witnessed patients that we thought we couldn't treat, that we thought we couldn't save, really having a life that's disease free because of the new research advances that we've been able to make. There's a remarkable thing that has happened is that the world has really gotten a lot smaller because our ability to communicate on an almost instantaneous basis with all of the great scientists and labs around the world. Our collaborations at CEDARS really span globally from Australia to Asia to Europe. It's that network have really been able to bring the best and the brightest minds together to solve very complicated or complex problems is where we really have our greatest opportunity and, and possibilities.